Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. And I wanted to talk about this Ethiopian airline that crashed um, last Sunday. Why talk about it now? Because, you know, sometimes you hear about these things and you don't really think, you don't really worry about how they might affect you as an individual. Um, I mean, I haven't got anybody in Ethiopia. I didn't have anybody in Malaysia when the uh, Malaysia 38370 went down. And I didn't know anybody in Indonesia um, in, I think it was September last year, when that plane went down. But it's getting to be a bit eerie because I'm trying to think, is there a Bermuda Triangle in the sky? It'd be different if they were finding crashed aircrafts. But there's been 90 commercial flights that have disappeared, completely disappeared over the last 70 years. You know, that is like one flight, that's over one flight a year. And when you think that planes they, you know, because I know that sometimes I, I have to go leave Bedfordshire to go to London sometimes. There's a part on the M1 that when I go through it, the weather changes. And it's almost like I'm going through a time tunnel. And I'm wondering if that's what happens with aircrafts on certain routes. I'm wondering if they go through some kind of time tunnel. Because I don't understand why there is no debris those planes are never found. They just disappear into thin air. I mean, people are saying that aliens are taking them and all sorts, but it's a bit bizarre. And you know what's sad about that? The people who've lost people in those planes, they can't mourn for them because they don't know where they are. And they'll be forever wondering if they're still alive, abandoned on some island somewhere. They'll never be able to mourn. And I think that is so sad. Now, we had 157 people that were on that flight, um, 21 UN representatives, 32 Kenyans, 18 Canadians, 9 Ethiopians, 7 Britons, 4 Austrians, 2 Nigerians, 3 Italians, 3 Slovaks, 2 of Hillary Clinton's representatives, 50 from the UN Environment Programme, and some representatives from the human trafficking program and two unknowns. I don't know how you get two unknowns in that because that's a bit bizarre. But apparently, um, I think it was in, anyway, sometime last year, um, there was a something that went out on social media from the UN government saying that they anticipated demonstrations in Addis Ababa in the Kelly's region, and that no Americans should not fly on the 10th of March. Now, this was, I heard this on Dr. Mumbai. She's, um, she's a Kenyan, um, she's a Kenyan, I won't say a vlogger, but she could be, but she's more, she's a teacher, she's a professor, she's way up there, she's really, really high up. Anyway, she was saying that they had, um, there was this, this, this information going about, about how they'd set, they'd, they'd told American citizens, or American, I think they were citizens, not to go in or out of Addis Ababa's Dole Airport on the 10th of March. Now, on the one hand, I'm thinking to myself, OK, the plane has malfunctioned. Apparently, these Max 8s and Max 9s, they're Boeing 737s. Apparently, um, the one that actually nosedived was only four months old. And they've made, they had about 5,000 on order. 350 were, have already gone out. And some of them have been going back and forth. But apparently what happens is with these new sophisticated ones, once you reach a certain level and you put the plane on autopilot, it nosedives. So you have to take it off of autopilot and do something with it. But if you're not trained or if you don't know how to do that, a couple of um, pilots, have, they, they fill in this kind of a feedback form.
And they had been complaining about that, apparently, saying that it nosedives once it reaches a certain height and the autopilot comes off. OK, so that's one thing, if that's what happens. And apparently two or three people said that. And they said that the guy who was drive, who was ride, flying the um, Ethiopian Airways flight was only 29. He might not have had the experience or the training and he'd only been flying 200 miles. I think his co-pilot had only been dry, dry, um, flying 200. It couldn't be 200 miles. It has to be 200,000 miles. Anyway, the long and short of it is, is that the, both of them were quite inexperienced. Now, there's that school of thought that whoever was flying that plane was inexperienced. The plane was too specialised. And when it nosedived like it did with others who were able to pull it up back, they couldn't do that. So it nosedived. There's also the theory that um, because there was going to be demonstrations in Addis Ababa, um, in the Kelly Square, apparently, that um, certain people were supposed to attend. And ugh, I don't know how it's supposed to work, but they was warning people not to get on the flight. Now, this is a few months ago. So how would they know a few months ago that there was going to be demonstrations on the 10th of March? And how did they how were they able to inform ahead of time that not not to board, not to go in and out of Addis Ababa on a particular day. But there again, Hillary Clinton, she had two aides on that plane, as far as I know. So it's all a bit bizarre. There's the there's the conspiracy theory about, um, like I said, about not telling anybody, to, not telling Americans to go on the plane. And then there's this theory, there's this school of thought about being inexperienced and not being qualified to drive, fly the plane. But the long and short of it is that they're now grounded. Trump has now grounded all the um, the Boeing 737 MAX 8s and MAX 9s by an emergency executive order. China has already done it. India, they're, they're not going to ban them. They're saying only very experienced pilots must fly them. Um, Ethiopia's banned those, of course. And there was another country um, who's banned it as well. Anyway, that's there's four, Indonesia, there's four countries who've banned those planes, who's grounded them, and they're not going to use them. So I don't know what's going to happen to the 5,000 that are on order. Um, what else? Yeah, I was just, uh, no, when I, yeah, what I was, what I was going to say is that, you know, when I'm thinking my theory about them disappearing, to me, it's more logical. I mean, then the conspiracy theory, I mean, apparently a local um, local people heard a big bang and said the plane was shot down from the sky. But there again, there would be debris if that was the case. So there seems to be a lot of theories going around. None of us know what the truth is. Um, I would like to think that there is something in the sky where people, you know, planes just go through that 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 um, time time space and just disappear. I mean, I wouldn't want to disappear in there because what happens to them? Just supposing there was something like the Bermuda Triangle, triangle in the sky. What happens to those people? Do they just live a div totally different life in a totally different space and time? It bears, it, you know, it doesn't bear thinking about. Anyway, I just wanted to do a little one about that just to let you know I'm in the know <laughs> but I'm not really in the know I'm just you know saying my little two pets were okay then ciao for now bye bye